السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد Dear respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته And welcome to a new episode from this series of episodes we, where we are going to discuss various issues regarding fasting the month of Ramadan. We discussed a few issues and inshallah we will continue discussing many other issues related to fasting the month of Ramadan and the various acts of worship that we can do during the month of Ramadan to make the maximum of the month of Ramadan. Just before I move, to discuss what we started to discuss last episode, I would like to remind myself and my brothers and sisters to put a target for themselves that this month of Ramadan, this year, should be different from previous other years. This year should be totally different and I should get the maximum of this month. And I would like to remind you, brothers and sisters, that you will go through hardship during this month fasting this month just always remember that there is a price for this you are exchanging this hardship for another price so don't just think of the hardship without what you are going to get in exchange of this hardship that will make it easy for you and that's why when people work and they are believing that they are going to receive materialistic exchange for whatever they are doing then the work will be easy for them now what Allah Jalla is going to give us in exchange of our deeds is more than what we get in this dunya much more you cannot even compare it but we ask Allah Jalla to have mercy upon us and to accept our deeds and then Allah Jalla will exchange our deeds for whatever he will, he wants. Now, in the previous episode, we said that the month of fasting in general can be described as to abstain from drinking, eating, and having sexual relationship from Fajr, from dawn, all the way until Maghrib during the month of Ramadan. We spoke about the first component, which is the intention, the first component of this definition. And then we started to speak about the second component of this definition. The second component of this definition is what? Is the timing factor. And we said in order to study timing factor from a technical perspective, or from a fiqh, juristic perspective, we need to discuss the daily timing and the yearly timing. The yearly timing means we fast the month of Ramadan, which is the ninth lunar month. The ninth lunar month. In terms of the daily timing, this is what we are going to explain in this episode. And inshallah, hopefully we can finish it in this episode. If we can't, then we will finish it in the second episode, inshallah, or in the following episode. In terms of the daily timing, we start our fasting from Fajr and we end it up by sunset. For, and this is the ijma of all scholars. This is the consensus of all scholars. None of the scholars said you start from uh, sunrise or you end by Asr timing. And I mention this because 
you find certain in the certain isolated narrations by some of the tabi'in the second generation or maybe the first generation or the third generation where some of those sahaba those tabi'in used to eat until the sun rise mean after fajr until the sun rise that is an odd opinion endorsed by ijtihad of some of the sahaba and it has not been endorsed by any of the scholars after them none of the four madahib have endorsed this opinion and hence we say that this opinion is not an opinion to be followed and the ijma has been established that the start of fasting is fajr timing and the end of fasting is the maghrib timing now the fajr time the fajr is known what does fajr mean the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained that the fajr is the white is the white color that we see on horizon it is not the white vertical color as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained it it is the white color that we see on horizon that is called al fajr as sadiq the true fajr but the other fajr is not the fajr sadiq so we eat and drink until al fajr as sadiq is clear is visible allah jalla wa ala says in the quran فَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ Eat and drink until the white thread is distinguished from the black thread. الخيط الأسود من الخيط الأبيض. From Fajr, from Fajr, this ayah, it was narrated that this ayah was related uh, uh, narrated uh, this ayah was revealed in the beginning fakulu wa shrabu wa kulu wa shrabu hatta yatabayyana lakum al khayt al abyad min al khayt al aswad full stop without al fajr so when this ayah was revealed some companions used to bring a black thread a white thread and they used to uh, eat and drink at night eat and drink and they used to look at those two threads until they were able to distinguish the black thread from the white thread once they are able to distinguish this they stopped eating of course at that time there is no light whatsoever it is totally dark they will continue eating and drinking even if after fajr becomes visible even after fajr sadiq becomes visible so they used to eat and drink eat and drink until it becomes clear for them means sun is about to rise then they will be able to distinguish the black color from the white color one of the companions who did this his name is adi ibn hatim adi ibn hatim al tai hatim al tai is a very well known uh, person uh, who used to be a very generous person adi ibn hatim he said to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that i had my billow and i put under that ma- that billow two threads one black one white and i was looking at them in order to distinguish and i was eating until that time so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him that is not the meaning of the ayah in another narration then allah jalla wa ala narrated the word min al fajr means the black thread from the white thread from fajr from fajr means this ayah is talking about the black or the darkness of the night and the white color the visible white color which is the whiteness of the day so that ayah is talking about the darkness versus the day itself or the light of the day with which starts by fajr time that is the meaning of the ayah would and uh, the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum used to uh, eat and drink until the fajr sadiq becomes visible and maybe all of us know the hadith 
of Ibn Umm Maktoum. Ibn Umm Maktoum, he was one of the people who used to call the Adhan at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam. Of course, he cannot distinguish the white Fajr, the real Fajr. So the Sahaba used to eat until he raises the Adhan. And he used to be a blind person as it was described in the Hadith. And he used to raise the Adhan when the people used to say to him that Tala al-Fajr, Tala al-Fajr. And that was the, the habit. Uh, so the Sahaba used to eat and drink until the Adhan, which is uh, the declaration of the Fajr timing, starts, which is, no, which is raised when the uh, light of the Fajr al-Sadiq comes. And this is, as we said, the ijma of all scholars. There is no discussion about it. But the main discussion in many non-Muslim countries is when is Al-Fajr al-Sadiq start? In fact, the, this discussion is also being discussed in many Muslim countries. There is a long discussion. I, would, uh, I prefer not to get into this discussion because there is no end for that discussion. It has not been confirmed and is still uh, the scholars are discussing it with the astronomers and the fiqh councils are discussing it. But what I advise, this is an advice, brothers and sisters, is that if you cannot confirm a specific time or if you cannot confirm that any particular time is the most correct time for the Fajr start, then what you need to do is to put yourself on the safe side. So, if there are different timings, means this masjid is starting Fajr at, let us say, 3.30. The other masjid is starting Fajr at 3.50. The other masjid is starting Fajr at 4 o'clock. And in some, in some countries, like for example in England, uh, the difference is quite big. The difference is may reach to half an hour or to 40 minutes. So in that case, what to do? I advise you to abstain from food, drink, etc. by the first time, provided that it is a reasonable time from a fiqhi perspective. So stop and drink, stop eating, drinking, by the first time, which is in, the, in our example at 3.30. And then pray Fajr after the last time, according to these calendars, and according to our example, is 4 o'clock. So pray Fajr after 4 o'clock. So by that, you have put yourself from both sides. You have, you have put yourself in the safe side from both angles. We have a break now. Let us stop for the break and inshallah we will continue the discussion after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Each day we'll take one step closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to the Qur'an, to our way of life. Each day we will explore the acts of worship that we do and we will find out how they relate to our hearts, how they impact our souls, how they help us understand the reality of existence. All of this and much more in our show, One Step Closer. All of you are invited to join us, share your stories, share your aspirations, share your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we'll be happy to have you on board. Join us in One Step Closer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. Just before the break, we were discussing the big problem in uh, 
that is in many non-Muslim countries, which is related to differences between different calendars in terms of Fajr. And we said that we gave an example. In some countries, in some calendars, they decide that Fajr starts at 3.30. And some other calendars go all the way to say that Fajr starts at 4 o'clock. So what do you do in this case? I said that, and that is a suggestion. That is a suggestion. In that case, try to put yourself from both sides. Try to put yourself on the safe side from both angles, from Salah perspective and from fasting perspective. So from fasting perspective, try to fast with the earliest time, provided that you believe that it is a genuine timing. So if there is a calendar that decides that Fajr starts at 3.30, like our example, so start fasting at 3.30. But if there is a calendar that says Fajr starts at 4 o'clock, and that is a genuine calendar, and you believe that it, they might have a strong evidence behind it, or they have a basis for that opinion, then pray Fajr after 4 o'clock. So in terms of fasting, you start fasting with the earliest time. And in terms of prayer, you prayed after the furthest point. If that is possible, then maintain that. This is my advice. This problem of difference in timings uh, between different calendars is a real big problem. And I cannot claim that... Uh, any solution that I will provide will be accepted and it will wipe out all these differences. That's why I suggested this solution where you put yourself on the safe side. This is one thing. The other thing, if there is no differences, in, imagine I don't know of any city that has no differences in terms of Fajr timing, but imagine that there is no differences, just follow that uh, calendar in your locality. Now, some people have a very common mistake. They leave five minutes or ten minutes before the Fajr timing. And they say that there is a Fajr timing and ten minutes before the Fajr timing, earlier than the Fajr, the actual Fajr timing, is considered to be the Sahri timing or the Suhoor timing or whatever they call it. But they call it uh, a suhoor, they consider it as the time the sahur should end. Yeah, they consider it as the time sahur should end. Now, is this right or wrong? No, in fact, this is wrong. There is no dalil for it. None of the orthodox scholars, none of the former dahib scholars recommended this. Why? Because the ayah that we read, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ Look at the ayah. The ayah says, كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ The word يَتَبَيَّنَ means until you for sure, for certainty, is able to distinguish the white thread from the black thread, which is to distinguish the night from the day. You are able for sure to distinguish means that if you are doubting that the f the night came to an end and or you are doubting that the fajr started then you are allowed to eat and drink until that point is visible for sure so no need to live to leave 10 minutes before fajr timing just to put yourself on the safe side that is not uh, recommended by Sharia. In fact, once we go and read the Sahaba, we will see that the Sahaba used to take this matter easily and they used to eat and drink until the time of the Fajr, until the Mu'addin raises his Adhan. Now, there is another mas'ala here, which is some people say if the Adhan, if the Mu'addin raised the Adhan, and he started by saying, Allahu Akbar. Do we stop eating and drinking by hearing the adhan, just by hearing Allahu Akbar? 
or can we continue eating and drinking until the end of the Adam? You will find two answers if you read in books, fatawa books, or maybe if you Google uh, a, a question about it, you search it online, you will find two answers. Some people say, no, you must stop immediately when you hear the Adam. And some other scholars said, no, you can eat all the way until the end of the Adam. But a very reasonable, practical solution that is supported by the all the adilla of Sharia, by the totality understanding of the Sharia, is that opinion that says, if you know that the Mu'addin is precise or is raising the adhan on time, exactly on time, means when Fajr time starts, then you have to stop when you hear the Mu'addin saying Allahu Akbar. Because at that point, the night came to an end and the Fajr or the day is starting. Because the Fajr adhan is raised at that point when night comes to an end. So if you know that the Mu'addin is raising the adhan exactly on time, then stop when you hear him saying Allahu Akbar. And I do tell people that, subhanAllah, you want to eat and drink even during the adhan means you had no chance to eat and drink except during the adhan? No. Put yourself on the safe side in terms of ibadah. And that is different from leaving 10 minutes before the adhan because that is not supported by any dalil. But here we are talking about the interpretation of the dalil. And if the fajr is known to be or to start at a specific point, then there is no excuse for you to go beyond that point. Okay, this is something related to the uh, start of the fast. Another common question that we hear from some sisters, they say that uh, a sister was pure during the whole night and then just a few minutes before the Adhan of Fajr, she saw her menses. We said in that case, she cannot fast because now she became uh, on her menses and Allah Jalla wa'ala gave women those, uh, Allah Jalla wa'ala obliged those women witnessing the menses, the menstruation period, not to fast. And even if they fast, it is not acceptable from them. And we will explain this, inshallah, in the near future. So if she saw her period, just one minute, two minutes, just before the adhan of the fajr, then she cannot fast. What about the opposite way? If she uh, was on her menses, and then just one minute or two minutes, she became pure. It might be difficult for her. She might not be able to fast. She might not be able to have suhoor, but that's what happened to her. Then we say, no, she must fast. If she became pure one minute or two minutes before the adhan of the fajr, then she must fast. And she can continue, inshallah. There is another issue that we need to also to mention, which is, it is highly recommended, brothers and sisters, to have the sahur meal. The sahur meal is the meal that we take before the fajr time, before we start our fasting. This sahur meal, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, تَسَحَّرُوا فَإِنَّ فِي السَّحُورِ baraka." Eat the sahur meal for there is a baraka, there is blessing in the sahur meal. Now, this scholar said, what is this baraka? Ibn Hajar mentioned it in Sahih al-Bukhari. He said that this baraka is either the baraka of the food that helps you uh, to fast for the whole day, or it is the baraka because you are making your sahur at the last part of the night. And we said, or you know, that uh, at the last part of the night, Allah Jalla wa'ala comes down to the lower heaven. 
And Allah Jalla wa'ala is telling his people who is making dua, I will accept his dua. Who is asking something, I will give him what he asked for. Who is seeking forgiveness, I will, gra I will grant him forgiveness. So that is a time of barakah. And that's why the sahur meal and time is a barakah. Ibn Hajar said that we can combine both of them. We can say it is barakah because of the meal itself and it is barakah because, because of that time and it is the time that Allah Jalla wa'ala descends to the lower heaven and Allah Jalla wa'ala is telling us who is making dua, who is seeking forgiveness. And that's why brothers and sisters, I advise you strongly to make use of that time. I would like to mention more about this point, but the camera person is telling me that this is the end of this episode. I have to end here, and inshallah, we will see you in the near future, and we will continue our discussion, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan is here, increase your iman. Ramadan is here, recite the Quran. We pray to Allah to put right our hearts, ask for forgiveness and make a new start. Raising our hands, we ask for His Rahma. Hear us, our Lord, and grant us Jannah. Ramadan is here, the month that is blessed. Ramadan is here, the month we love best. Ramadan is here, increase your iman. Ramadan. Recite.